All right, I'm calling to order at 6.33, calling to order the October 6th regular monthly meeting of the EDC. Um, the additions or deletions to the agenda. Let me just go over the agenda. We're gonna be talking about the loan fund, uh, just some to set some guiding, to give some direction to the people that are working on it. Um, a discussion of the process to handle community grants. Hey, Joe, welcome. And uh, a discussion of the process to handle the larger grants that we want to do in our priority areas. The new business, we have uh, three new applicants, which is fantastic for the rental incentive program um, and updates from, I think, most of the working groups. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Am I repeating that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, no, hearing none. Um, this is a little unusual. I can't remember whether we approved the minutes last time from July and August. <clears throat> the minutes are all posted in the website uh, as well as for our last meeting for September. So just in case we didn't approve them, I would like to ask for a motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes, July 21st, August 4th, <laughs> September 1st, 2022. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Patrick, second. Any uh, discussion? No, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any EDC members opposed? No, okay. Um, uh, sorry, so we're just gonna shift around um, <laughs> the discussion of, um, uh, the, of the rental center program and then the housing, and then the one of the housing, one of the working groups, which is housing. There's some other working groups that I told you come at the end because I thought that was when it was gonna be scheduled. So we'll start with the rental incentive program. Um, and Jill, if you want to combine that with any other information about the housing working group, that would be fine. But let me give you a, let me give you permission to share your screen. Okay, go ahead. And will you stop sharing yours? Oh yes, right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we, we're feeling quite successful in the housing working group. We have two of the two applications for the Workforce Rental AGU program are moving forward. Uh, Tisha Bush will break ground in the next two weeks on the foundation. So she's building a garage with the ADU above it. And then Sean and Anna are waiting on contractors' final quotes. <clears throat> they have minimal work to do, but it will probably, you know, it'll probably expand. So those two are going ahead and they're both working to get the award from the state grant as well. So our award and the state grant are working in unison for those two, pro two people. We've had a third application, and so we'll be able to go view that and work with that applicant in the next month. So that would take us to, if she was approved, that would be the program pilot done. We, we set out with three applications and we'll use them all. So that's exciting. Um, and then what we're bringing you tonight are three recommendations for the rental incentive program. And we can go through them one by one. Do you want to approve them together or separately? You go through them one by one, but I'm guessing we can approve them separately unless there are some certain questions that seem to come up for some and others. Okay. All right. So here's the first one. The applicant is Hannah Abrams. The house is on South Road, 1906 South Road. It's a three bedroom single family home and she's applying for a two year $7,000 incentive. She meets all the eligibility requirements and her permit for you know, the fire inspection permit for rentals is in process. Trina's met her and once they get that permit sorted out, they're all ready to go. Um, so she's already done the meeting with Jay Moody from the state who's checking on all of the fire and safety things. And there are three items she just needs to be to replace by November the 1st to be compliant with that. Um, there's details, more details on this application if, if you want all of the details, but I thought you might like to see photos and um, that seems pretty clean and simple. She hasn't rented this before, this would be a new property into the marketplace. Any questions? Great. Jill, just remind us of the process for checking to make sure that because this is a multi-year, the seven thousand is is for two right. It's it's if they do two years, it's less if they do one year. Yes. So just remind us of the process for. Is there some? There is some kind of process to checking up on the interim or at the end or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so right at the beginning. 
Um, so we, we give the first of all, we give the grant in two goes. Um, so she and she has to present a lease, and in the lease, it has to have the conditions of employment of one of the occupants of the household. Um, and we can verify that. We ask for permission to verify that. And then we will keep in touch should that tenant <clears throat> have to leave or change for any reason. And then when she writes a lease for the second year, um, we'll be working with her again. We have a recommended lease for her to use if she'd like to use that. So we will work through with her on finding the tenant if she wants help and screening the tenant. We won't choose the tenant for her. Okay, that's great, thank you. Any other questions? No, oh, okay, keep going. Okay, second one. The second one, the applicant is Maureen O'Leary. The house is on 7 River Street. It's a duplex, two bedroom duplex. Uh, she's applying to, again, for the two year $7,000 incentive grant. Uh, we made the site visit, met the owner. She meets all the eligibility requirements. She did used to rent this as a monthly rental and wants to move now to a long-term rental in our program. She's completed the state fire safety inspection and she's looking to rent it out um, on November the 15th. I got one quick question, Jill. Uh, this is two bedroom. Uh, is 7,000 the right number? Or yes, I think is. so. Okay. I uh, know, let me I check. Remember, I can't remember the splits. Um, we'll, let me check. Because it's going to apply. Let me run through the next one and then I'll check the details. Okay. I think those were the same. It was it was that the amount they could rent was different, whether right. it was one bedroom, two bedroom, or three, but the amount was the same. Right. It's two plus, <coughs> isn't it? Two plus is the same amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two, you're right. Because it, it was it was a studio, one bedroom, and then two plus. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just want to make sure. All right. So the third property, the applicant is Sarah Calendar. The house is on 608 East Woodstock Road. So just as you're driving into the village, she's in the town on that road coming in. Um, it's a single family home, three bedroom. And again, she's applying for a two year $7,000 incentive grant. We've made a site visit, met the owner. She meets all the eligibility requirements. This house is in, this house um, was Meg's. I can't remember Meg's last name. Um, Brazil, right? Pardon? Brazil? Yes, Meg Brazil's house. So she is still going through all of the probate stages, but she is the sole, she is both the executor and the sole inheritant and has provided paperwork to uh, show that she is the sole owner. Um, she's met with David Green for the uh, pre-state inspection inspection. And she's got some uh, electricity or el electrical work to do. She's looking to rent it by November the 1st. Okay, great. Any questions? No, this is great. This is very exciting that you got three people. Can we move to, can we move to vote on it all as a package, John? Yeah. <laughs> great. Should I stop sharing? Uh, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I, I was just. I was just wondering, uh, I, I, the goal here is to take, I think, to take um, uh, properties out of the month to month type of thing to long term. Is, yes. Is that, is that being achieved with these three properties? So we extended the program a little bit to also include properties that aren't currently on the rental market to include them came from the belief that we, we believe there are several properties that were uh, not in the rental market that could be in the rental market. And then this directs them into long-term rental. So one of the properties was being rented month to month. The other two would be new rentals. So we're giving the incentive. So they're not turning into the long-term, into short-term rentals. And just to clarify, when you say we changed it, that was part of our public discussion when we approved it. It wasn't. Yes. That that wasn't something that you've done behind the scenes. It was no. It, uh, when we originally started talking about this all that time ago, we thought it was just short-term rentals, and then we realized there's an opportunity beyond that. Yeah. Larry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Any 
No, you didn't. Does that answer you? Yes. Um, are, can you give us a sense of the pipeline? You said there's one, there's a third ADU person. Are there, is there, what do you think? I mean, that will, are you, is, are you serving basically every, is every person who's applying, what's the pipeline? Yes, so far we've, we've, we've brought to you every person who's applied. We have one person who's interested, but the situation <clears throat> is complex and they're not really ready to move. So we've brought you, We've, we are working with the people or we're giving the grants to the people who can turn on these rentals or turn on the process of moving to the ADU immediately and not tying up the money with people who are still, well, if this and then that, because we think we'll, we'll cut, we only come to you in January and ask for more money for those people. Right. And we basically have, we have the capacity, if, if everyone asks for the 7,000, which that seems to be a trend, we have 35, do remind me, we have 35,000 for the rental incentive. Right. So we'd have room for one more, wouldn't we? Maybe one or two, one or two more, depending whether two, they came on a two year or a one year. Two, yeah. Well, it should be two year. If yeah. We have 35,000. Although I think we spent a little bit on legal or something like that. We have. We've had some legal expenses to get all of the agreements tied right. up. And then but we're finished with that work. Yeah. Well, I just just a brief comment. I mean, it's obvious, but and but you, when you started by saying you're feeling pretty good, I, I, I this far exceeds my my own sense of what might happen. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the idea that, and actually, I think it actually creates a, a problem if we decide not to fund additionally, which I think <laughs> we can leave that because then we have a, a one year funding of a housing advisor with no funds to distribute. Never occurred right. we could have that problem. I suppose it's a good problem to have. So anyway, this is, I think, fantastic, um, fantastic outcome. We've basically, I think, brought five units of workforce housing onto the market yes. at an average cost of about, you know, eight or eight, eight or eighty five hundred dollars a unit, which is, um, I think, you know, a fantastic outcome. And it suggests that, the, you know, if, if the if the pipeline remains you know, active, it seems to me we, are, we can decide that when the time comes. Yes, and we haven't, so we've done our marketing so far for the, has really been in listserv. We could get more uh, active than that. We've chosen not to as we get these first ones on. Okay, any other comments or questions? Anything else from the housing working group or is this really, you really focused on these two programs, right? Uh, we focused on these two programs and getting them sorted out. We really haven't been able to make much progress with the support stuff that we wanted to do. So that will be our next look. And then also trying to build the picture of what next year might look like. We've done a little bit of research into that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, so John, I'll make a motion that we approve these three. Oh, sorry, we, I forgot we didn't do that. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Is there a second? A second. Todd, second. Any discussion, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. No? Okay. Congratulations. That's great. Great Excellent work. Job. Great work. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Um, I just, I'd like to go back now to the um, old business, and um, then we'll come back with the remaining working group updates at the end. Um, although I do think, Jill, you're having made the point and just having a couple of minutes to reflect on it, I do think in the future, I, we might actually switch around the working group updates to have that be in the beginning. Um, it, it might act as a governor on how much time we spend on the more strategic, you know, the more open-ended discussions, which might yeah. be a good thing. Thank you, that would be helpful to us. Yeah, okay. Um, before, we, so I'm, we're moving now to 5A, discussion of loan fund to support local businesses. <coughs> As we go into it, I just wanted to show this picture, um, which really provides a, a much, it provides our, a picture of our current scope of work or our priorities, what we're working on. And to me, this is a very robust, sustainable picture meaning that I could see us doing this for the next five years. Not that it, any of these things could be stricken and added to or taken down, you know, taken away. But this seems to me to be a very a good model. And I think today's 
meeting is going to demonstrate that because we're going to hear from at least three of the working groups on significant progress that they're making, um, <clears throat> as well as some of the initiatives. So we have the five working groups. We've agreed on that and the five priorities, and we've established working groups in each of those cases. Um, and we have three, two initiatives, the community grants, I'm calling that the smaller grant program, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, and the grant writing support, which is the pilot program with a, you know, with a, um, with a, a grant support writer, Allison Caffrey. And what we're talking about now is whether or not to add a third, and I think potentially final initiative to this scope of our work, which is a, a loan fund for businesses. Um, and Larry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to, to, to summarize in a minute. Let me just show quickly the slides. I'm not even gonna, and then ask you to summarize some of this information since you did most of the work. Um, last time we talked about Bradford and used it as an example. The mission of the Bradford Revolving Loan Fund is to make loans to Bradford-based businesses that have the potential to increase employment within the town, to grow those businesses, and to improve the general welfare using generally accepted principles of sound banking. Sounds, you know, my vote would be that's exactly what, if we had a loan fund, that's exactly what our mission should be. Larry and Joe and I have been investigating this. And when I say Larry and Joe and I, I mean Larry. Um, yes. <laughs> Joe and I have been asking questions and Larry has been answering them. Um, and Larry has both spoken to Bradford and also spoken to an attorney. And what we'd like to do tonight is before we, so we, we have identified the situation and come up with a model that we think is replicable here in Woodstock before we start to actually develop the detailed process, meaning the application forms and the criteria, I think Larry, Joe, and I would like to get general feedback from the EDC on a very simple question, which, which is, should we, should, if we can, it, basically these questions, assuming we can resolve whatever concerns are raised, do we wanna to try to create a loan <clears throat> fund or not? And, if, and what are the major concerns? I don't think we, I think we don't want to kind of dive into the detailed work if basically at the end of it, people will say, well, we, we, this is a great, this is perfect, perfectly constructed, but we don't really want to have a loan fund. So Larry, would you be comfortable sort of taking us through the, the you know, both, both this, which is your, you know, summary of, of what's happening in Bradford and also the legal advice we've gotten, and then we can get the feedback from EDC. Is everyone okay with that? And Larry, are you okay with that? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I didn't know I was going to do that. Um, well, I, I, it seems to me, John, the key thing is there, there are two key, two things that Bradford is one of the places that it has a loan fund. Um, they've uh, they were funded um, years ago by fe federal money, basically, and uh, they've been doing this since I think 15, 20 years ago, and. Um, I talked, I had a long talk with a guy named Bill Moore, who's the, uh, basically the equivalent of our EDC uh, administrator. And um, John, you've this, I think, is that what I wrote? Because that looks like me. Yeah. Um, that's a, a, a good summary of, of the successful uh, way that they've been doing these loans. They are uh, pretty much towards, uh, given to uh, poor profit businesses. Um, and uh, I don't know if I can add much to what's, what's written there. I mean, the main thing, <clears throat> the main charge I felt I was responsible for was, was to find out, first of all, if these, uh, if we could do it, whether we could actually have a loan fund. Is it legal for the, um, an arm of the town government to give out loans and if there was any constraint in terms of giving out loans to for-profit businesses versus nonprofit businesses or businesses that are not aligned with the usual uh, business of running a town. And we, <clears throat> Paul Gillies, who's a very well-respected uh, lawyer for uh, municipalities and who was, re who was uh, recommended to us by the select board, um, gave us a very thorough and uh, positive yes we can we can can do this so there 
um, there's a, a, a lot of a lot of questions that I have in my mind about it, how we would do it. I think what I was expecting or hoping for was a a, a consensus or non-consensus that we want to do this, and then maybe have a group of people pursue. I'd be happy to continue to pursue the the the, the legal aspects of it. Um, there's a, a lawyer that Bradford used. It'd be my suggestion. <coughs> that person is very uh, knowledgeable with this kind of a program. That we might talk to that person. Um, that would be in terms of making sure that all the paperwork was right, that we have the right right security, et cetera. Um, but beyond that, I think there are some, you know, some some pretty big questions about, you know, who who are we giving loans to? Would we give those loans? Would we give a loan to somebody that we denied a grant to, or are they a different category? Are we are we are we somehow suggesting that we aren't giving grants to uh, for-profit organizations? Is that implied in this? I don't I don't know that it is. Um, uh, touching on something Joe mentioned last last meeting, you have to keep in mind that if we give out loans, we don't have that money for other other uh, purposes. So you want to, I think we want to be mindful of, of, <clears throat> of that aspect. So um, that's it. That's about it. I guess we're looking, we're looking for a, a, a sense of the meeting or whatever, John, to, that we want to pursue this. I guess yeah, we exactly. don't or not, right? Let, Joe, go ahead. Well, I, 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 Larry, that's awesome. You, I mean, you know, you're doing a great job with that. But I, I'm, I'm wondering if it uh, would be uh, beneficial for the other commissioners to know some other facts, like, you know, the maximum amount loan, the default rate, um, who, who specifically would do the vetting of uh, applicants. Um, those are kind of, I think, immediate questions I would have and I did have uh, when we first proposed this program. So maybe you can clarify those points for the rest of the commission. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think we've, we've I don't think we have um, um, made inroads on those. I think those are those are all Wait, things. Did, that, did we say something about the maximum amount would be like forty thousand dollars? Is that? Yeah. Uh, there was a there was one default. Uh, that's yeah. item four there. They had out of all these years, they've only had one default, and it was for about forty thousand dollars. And their and their loan size was five to eighty thousand. I don't think I don't think we found we hadn't had a discussion about a maximum. Didn't, we could have one, but we don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, John, are, we, are we trying to just decide whether we want to move forward and not? We're not. We don't need to talk details tonight, right? We're but just we're not trying to design the program. I right, we're not. I'm not. That's not what I'm suggesting, Patrick. I'm just suggesting maybe a broader outlook of, of what is happening in Bradford. So you can, there's some, some things you can think about yeah. until we do decide. I think, yeah. Okay. So, so, well, I think it's, it is all, it is basically there. I feel we would just take another minute and let people read through it. But I think it, it, yeah, it, it's, um, it, it is vetted by a private group of yeah, people, mostly bankers. Right, but they didn't know that. And yeah. I thought maybe you could right. point yeah. it out. So any, Deborah? Oh, and, and then Todd. Sorry, Todd, I didn't see your hand. Deborah first, then Todd. Go ahead. Um, I'm curious. I mean, again, we're not designing right now. It would feel uh, it would feel appropriate to me that whatever this loan fund is would follow the similar criteria of the EDC at large. You know, and that would be a good way of of the vetting is to say that it it would still fall within what we're looking to create through the EDC, you know, as far as the, as the um, uh, guidelines, <clears throat> who gets who gets them. Um, and I'm just curious that with the information that you got, Larry, which by the way, is this is really wonderful uh, to see, um, that Bradford says it's a five person committee, mostly bankers to review the app. But I'm just wondering, do you have, or can we look at what their criteria is? Yes. Uh, for how they vet? Um, well, they have an extensive application um, uh, set up on their on their website, um, and, and definitely a lot of that would be very useful to us. Um, uh, um, they don't have an EDC, so they don't have the ability um, to make grants 
So I, I do think that I, well, we're getting into designing. I think we would need to have an answer to someone who asked us for, let's say $50,000 and we say, no, we're not giving you a grant, but we're gonna give you a loan. Why? You know, I think those are, those are difficult questions in my head. Um, and I think they just need, we'd, we need to be able to point to something and say, this is, this is why. <laughs> right. I, let me, let, uh, uh, let, I'm going to come back and try to answer. I, I, I do think we can answer that question, um, but let's just wait. Todd first and then Michael. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, I don't want to come out the wrong way, but I just, this all sounds great, but aren't we just talking about it spiritually? We're okay with this becoming like a committee and the committee getting into all the questions we might have. So do we okay. need to talk about all this tonight or just say, yeah, I think we should explore more of it because it just feels like this would be committee work that they would present to us in a organized manner at a future date. So yeah, if that's the, if that's the sense, then I support this to going to committee and a working group to be formed to explore if necessary. I think it's great. If we have questions and we're going to do that tonight and talk about it for three hours, then I can write questions and do that too. Okay. All right. Let's let's assume it's the former and let's see what. But uh, yes, we're trying to do the former. I do think that if there are visceral things that would cause people to say. You know, it's very unlikely that I would approve this. That's kind of what we uh, just in your vote, then just incorporate that feeling. If you if you right. think that there's not much you would do to approve it, then so forth. Wait, may I, wait, wait, may I inject though? Todd, I, I don't think anybody, any of us would have a problem with if we do not want to uh, tailor, tailor make this thing tonight. But if there are questions yeah. that you want to ask of me or of John, email us and then we'll put it on the list and those are the things we'll pursue as we further look into this issue. All right, that's great. Thank you, Michael. Uh, yeah, so I just, I don't want to get into the details of it because um, that's not, that's not what we're here for tonight, but I definitely feel like we need to, I feel like this, we've been trying to work on this for the past five years. And uh, so it'd be nice to actually get this going um, and, and available for people. I, I mean, that's all I have to say. Okay. All right, well, just to take a sense of, I mean, this is not a, so the vote, I suppose, is just a vote to, should we continue working on this? Is there anyone opposed, is there anyone who feels like they're so uncertain mm -hmm. of things that, that they don't think it's worth working on it until we have some debates? Or do they think that we can likely solve these problems and whatever your concerns are, and therefore let us, let a group come back with a specific proposal that we think addresses the questions that were raised tonight and, and any other questions that the group has? Is there, is there anyone who's opposed to that? Just hearing a sense of the group seems like we're all pretty supportive. It's okay to be opposed. Or do we just want to kind of get it out on the table. Is it possible to put a deadline on this? I mean, to say like, okay, yeah, we all support this, but can we say, okay, by our, our meeting in January, if that's when we have it, can we have this thing active? I mean, I don't know the intricacies of this, but it'd be nice to have a date. I, I, I think I, we haven't had Michael in your own words. Quick. <laughs> working on for five years so you know i think well, let's interpret michael's comment as let's do that he's supportive of doing this as quickly as possible I, I happen to agree i happen to think that there that that having a loan fund targeted towards businesses will actually help and i don't will help us significantly in sharpening the criteria we use for making grants mm -hmm. and that it will it will separate it will give us a very rational way to answer exactly the question that Larry and Deborah have basically posed, which is why, what, by what criteria would we give someone a grant? <coughs> and I think Bradford has shown the way, and uh, and I think the group can come up with that fairly quickly. Bradford has also operationally shown the way if we're comfortable doing it the way they said, which is one I think very good way of doing it. So, so I think that it is possible, Michael, for us to move quickly. I, you know, January. I, you know, I, I think there's a benefit. To, if we're not exactly in parallel with the community grant process, at least not being a year or six months off of it would be would benefit us because it would allow us to communicate more clearly to all the constituents. If you look like X, then this is what you should apply for. And if you look like Y, then this is what you should apply for. That's my view. So, all right, no one has objected. So I'm going to take that as um, that we <clears throat> should put a serious effort into designing this and come back to the group with a proposal yeah. uh, as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, John, uh, John I, before, are you going to move on? Because I want to. Well, I was just going to ask for volunteers, but go ahead. 
before I do that, I, I, the the um, I think that uh, hand in hand with this, um, we should engage an attorney to help us with the yeah. you know design it. And I don't think we have uh, votes uh, voted any money yeah. for that. We, no, we, we have. have no, we have funds. You have funds for it. We have. We have. Well, no, that I think that was to determine whether it was legal or not. Right. Wait, sorry, Larry, we lost you there for a second. You thought that was for what? Oh no! Five grand. Five grand was for yeah. legal advice. Yeah, Larry, we've lost you. Uh, we can't. Can anyone else hear Larry? No, I can't hear Larry. Hold on a second. Let me just mute up. Larry, say it. Say it again. All right. Looks like maybe he can't hear us. John, if I remember correctly, there was five thousand yeah. dollars. There uh, is. There was. And it was. If you can hear us, Larry, that five thousand, I believe, was for legal. Yes, legal advice, legal advice to, to help set this up to do exactly what you're suggesting. And and to Michael's point, uh, Michael, I haven't been on as long mm -hmm. as you in the EDC as you have. Uh, but to in my mind, this has only come up twice in, in the last two meetings, and it feels like we're moving forward quickly uh, because of the Bradford example. No, so, no, but my, sorry, Michael, you can go ahead and explain the history. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this was back when um, Tom was the head of this committee. We, we were trying to get this done. And we were, we were literally, literally talking five years ago. Joe will probably vouch for that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on board with you. Definitely move. We got to move yeah. it forward. Actually, I think it was seven years ago with Tom and then five years ago with Charlie. So That's right. it's been happy. Yeah, so. Okay, Larry, can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Okay, did you want to try again to speak or have you been permanently muted? Oops. No. Yeah, no, no, no. Yes, go ahead. You're, we can barely hear you, but go ahead. Oh, oh, oh I don't know what's going on. Uh, I was saying that I thought the five thousand dollars was to determine whether the loan fund was legal or not. It, 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 there were no constraints on it. That's fine. No, I don't believe there were constraints on it. I think we can feel comfortable. Yeah. Right? And it. and we we haven't gotten the bill from Paul Gillies yet. So how much <laughs> how much can we spend on a lawyer? I, I, to be honest, I think that. Yeah, I think we're, let's be able to we run out of we don't get a bill, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but I would be I would be surprised if we run out of legal money in order to create a program yeah. which already exists and has been set up and has been operating for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. You don't know lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we can deal with this offline, but I'm not a, to be honest, I'm not sure we need one. Uh, you know, I think we you know, we have a problem. we have a program that's already legal. That's but anyway. A good one, Larry. That was a good one. Uh, was there anyone who would be interested in working on this? Uh, Larry is interested in it. I've been involved in it. I think Joe, you're, think you mentioned that you might not want to continue, or you do want to continue. He, he, he's the one that didn't want to. Continue. Oh, Larry didn't want to continue. All right, I, well, I do. Is there anyone else who is interested in joining this? Um, and we have a couple of members who are missing tonight. All right. Well, Michael, that. Um, Michael actually looks like I can't see his camera, but it looks like Michael stepped away for one second. But Larry, my suggestion, Larry and Joe, is that we call, give Michael. Oh, Michael, you're back. Michael, would you be interested in working on this at least for the next couple of months? I, I know you've been an enthusiast of it. I hate this kind of stuff. <laughs> what do you say? He hates, he this, hates kind this kind of stuff. Of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you just I really hate it, and I'm not good at it. Uh, okay. Right. Ask a lot of questions about it, Michael. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I think we, we will then um, uh, soldier on. Um, I'm happy to criticize, though. Right. <laughs> and, and we will take that into account when yeah, thinking about the deadline. do a very good job at that. We'll, we'll take that into account when thinking about the deadline. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, let's move on here. Okay. Um, the discussion of the process to handle community grants. Um, so last time we we agreed we had a discussion about one aspect of community grants, which was the amount of money that we wanted to allocate this year. Um, I don't remember precisely whether we we basically came to the conclusion that we wanted to allocate a hundred thousand. Not everyone wasn't unanimous. It was clear it was a, a you know a, a meaningful majority. Um, I put up these basic questions that I thought we should try to resolve today. We did talk about launching the process immediately after this meeting. Uh, that may or may not be possible, depending on our answers to some of these questions, because I didn't have a chance to get any online platform revised or modified from last year, if any, any or 
is needed. I think, Todd, it would be very simple to get Sam to help just get the pages back online. The problem is I can't find the pages. They're there. I just couldn't get them up for this meeting. So um, I think we should assume that within a week, we could launch the process with an online approach with exactly the same approach as last week. We didn't want to make changes other than to change the year. So these are the questions that I would like to try to answer tonight. Do we want to require or request pre-applications as we did last year? <laughs> if we have 100,000 to grant, do we want to set maximum grant sizes? I'm not advocating for or against these points. I'm just bringing up the questions. Do we want to stick with 100K allocation? I don't want to, I, I'm just, I don't, I think we voted on it the last time. So I'm not trying to reopen that, but I'm just reminding us what we did. Um, do we want to have the same application and the same way of reviewing where we have you know, meetings where the people give a presentation for 20 minutes or whatever it is. Do we want to indicate that we have a preference for the five priority areas, but we're not limited to that as long as it's economic and community development? Um, do we want to provide any guidance for businesses that are considering applying? Um, and I'll, you know, do we want to tell people that, that there may be, that they're, you know, we're working hard on a loan fund that we've you know, that we're generally in support of. It isn't developed yet, but it will be soon. Or do we not want to provide any, any uh, guidance? Or do we want to tell them that, you know, we certainly will consider grants from businesses, but that there needs to be a clear public benefit that just saying, if you give me this money, I will hire more people or I will have more customers. Or I'll have a bigger business. I think this is the reason why I think we need a loan fund because I think implicitly what we did last time was to say, if you don't have a clear definable public benefit, that's more than just, you're gonna hire more people, you're gonna grow your business, then we're not going to give you a grant because many people are opposed to funding private businesses in that, for that reason. As opposed to if someone came to us and said, we'd like to do our facade, which is a downtown rejuvenation priority, or said we would provide a public restroom in the East End, I think we would do it. So do we wanna provide guidance for, for businesses to make it clear that if they do apply for a community grant, we're going to look for a, a, a benefit that is of this type of benefit that I've written up there, not just that it, a business is good for economic development and therefore give us, give us money to do what we, you know, what we need to do. And what deadline do we, what's the schedule? What's the calendar? Do, so, okay. Yeah, so these are the questions I'd just like to discuss. I know there's a lot of them. Some of them are fairly simple. Feel free to comment on whichever ones, mm -hmm. and then I'll kind of go back at the end and see if we have a consensus me, on uh, all these. Let me Joe, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, there are two things I'd like to pick on. One, where we talked about, um, what's the second from the bottom? Do we want to provide guidance? Um, I'm wondering, and it's just a question, I'm wondering if we're gonna get into the area of um, deciding what we think is best for the town. And maybe we should be, but should we be doing that? That's the way I should ask it. Should we be doing that? Should we be uh, putting ourselves in a position of making judgment calls about what be, would be good for the town and what would not be? You know, somebody want to come in and put a tattoo parlor in or something like that, and they need money to do it. I mean, I'm using that probably a bad example, but you know, I'm coming. Are there are there are there businesses we wouldn't support because of the nature of the business? Maybe. That's, yeah, that's your and, and, and in our opinion, doesn't really fit. Uh, you know what Woodstock is about, or what yeah. we think Woodstock is about. Now we're getting getting into that into that realm. That's one question. The second is, and you know. Uh, I don't know if this is the right place that, but I remember when we, way back when we first, uh, when Michael and Deborah, I think it was Michael and Todd, and maybe, no, it was Todd and Deborah who, who came up with the pre-app and all that great stuff. I mean, it was really beneficial. I think it did well, but there was discussion back then about um, have we nailed down really and really um, identified what the mission of the EDC is so that that could be looked at by possible applicants and before they even think about uh, uh, applying for something, do they meet what we consider as right. the mission of the EDC? Right. 
on that point, I just want to be clear. I think we have just spent six months and said that the mission of EDC yeah. for now yeah. is to do five things. Two five things, exactly. Right. And, so, and, and what we've also said until now, that we, we have a chance to change it. This is sort of the last sure. times we can sure. do it, is that we are not prepared to reject everything else. And therefore, yeah. those are the five things that are our mission. But this year, at least, we will allocate $100,000 to things that support either of those things or something else, as long as that something else is economic and community development. Okay. And so if it, you know, uh, okay. yeah. So that, well, I, I, the reason I asked that question, yeah. because, you know, there were so many applicants last year, which is good, which is great. But I think okay. some of us brought the question, would there be as many if they looked at these five categories that we had now have and say, well, what's the point? I don't feel, you know, I don't fit into any of this stuff. So uh, who's that? Todd, my Zoom messed up. Okay, he'll, he'll um, that will help. Okay, thanks, Todd. No, I think Larry's microphone is back. All right, so I think the answer to that question up until now, we can yeah. change it, is we the community grant program is not limited to the five priorities. It's, it is limited to economic by law, or yeah. by, to economic and community development, right. but it's not limited to the five priorities. Okay. Um, unless any, I mean, again, that's I'm just, I'm reflecting what I think we've agreed to. But other comments about about this process, Todd. Oh, sorry, just, and then Deborah. I didn't see Deborah's hand. Todd first, and then Deborah. Go ahead. I just wonder. I mean, I think this debate's good tonight. But can we can we like do this as homework too, and come back and and like just decide as a group in the next meeting what exactly we're going to do can we can we have a homework assignment on it or we're just going to sort of go through it all i'm just well, sick it's hard for me to i'm it's hard for me to think well, straight it's just like let's just make you know i'm just wondering if we're going to go live soon i suggest that no matter what we after right our next meeting we go live shortly thereafter but we like finalize this stuff then if possible oh um if we do that i think the only reason i'm pushing for it is from a time frame if we if we wanted to push the annual funding meeting to February, let's just say, which I don't think is bad. It's it's soon earlier than we've done it in the past, also one month later. We could do it in early February. I think we would have enough time if we announced it mm. next month. When did we do the, when did we open the app last year? Uh, well, we probably opened it last year in September, but this year we're in, in late September, I think, and we had the yeah. meeting. No, no, but, but we, we had the meeting in March, so I think it was later than this. I don't remember. Exactly. Yeah, I thought I feel like we didn't do it yet, but I, I'm just no, no. Up. But but I think we wanted to. We I think I mean it, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but we'd like to do it again before March. If we did it in March, we have more than enough time to do it. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I agree. I I agree. I just think it's a lot to process, and I'm just sick. So that's yeah. all I'm saying. Okay, all right. And let's just keep going for a few minutes anyway. Deborah and then Patrick. Yeah, um, I missed the last meeting. This first one I missed, and I am very sorry, guys. It was just crazy time at that moment. So I want to understand what you're saying about number three, that there's a hundred K that you agreed would go to the community grants, which means they are community grants that are smaller in nature outside of the five working groups. And the rest of the money is for larger projects that we're trying to fund through, you know, that fit within the working groups. Is that correct? No, there are two, not quite. And the, and the, and the, in my interpretation and the differences are extremely important. Okay. The first is that the hundred K is not for things that are not the priorities. There are small things that are economic development. If they are, in my view, if they are in the five priority areas, just small, that's even better than something that's not in the five priority areas and small, but we will consider both. So in other words, if you have something that is either small or outside the priority area, this is your chance to get it funded. So it has to be economic and community development. It can't be a give me money because I want the money, but it could be uh, give me money to, um, you know, uh, to, uh, to advertise farmers, uh, you know, which, you know, to have a to have an art show. Um, well, that's an event, you know. I, in other words, we're not the the 
This does not have to, the 100K, the community grants do not have to be in the five priority areas. Okay, I think I'm saying the same thing. So, but it's, it, but there's smaller grants in nature. Correct. And larger grants are, we're still looking for. The five priority areas. The, the part that's different about what you said about the larger grants mm -hmm. is that it's, they're not limited to, I would say, they should not be limited to the working groups. We have never gotten a larger grant from anyone other than a working group. But if someone came, but I don't think we want to say that if someone came to us with a proposal to increase childcare capacity, or someone came to us with a proposal to build lots of housing, that wasn't part of the working group. I don't think we, I think we would want to judge it on its merits. Not, okay. not I'm the, sorry, the topics of the working group. I didn't mean correct. through the working groups. I just meant sorry. the topics. I okay. just want to be, I just want to be really precise. Yep, so, I, so, I, so yes, I, therefore, what you were saying is exact is is right. Understood. Uh, and I I agree with you that I I think it would be great if we got this out sooner than later, um, just so that everybody feels uh, they have their opportunity. Um, so if we could get it out this month, I think that would be a great thing if it's possible. Okay, I, I'm going to propose a way that it might be possible because I might be making this too complicated. But let me let Patrick and Michael speak first. Patrick and Michael. Okay, uh, I'm going to go down the bullet list here. Uh, do we want to require request pre-applications? Uh, I'm, you know, I think the pre-applications help people sort of focus. Uh, I know we talked about possibly getting rid of them. I mean, how much was the pre-app different from the from the app? So I, I I would be okay with just going to an app, especially since we're going to make this less of them uh, because of the hundred k. I don't think we should set maximum or minimum grant sizes. I think, you know, the if it's a good idea, it might make sense to do it, whether it's big or small. Uh, the 100K, I'm cool with that. Uh, I think the review process of having people give the presentation was very helpful in my mind. So I think we should keep that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, then in terms of the five priorities, I think, you know, if, if, if somebody does a small grant that's in one of our priorities, you know, maybe it has a little bit more uh, pull for us, but you know, again, I see this hundred grand is uh, weaning people off of what we did last year, and except instead of having three hundred twenty thousand dollars, we're having a hundred thousand dollars. So it's just kind of a way of weaning them off, uh, so we can go to the bigger ideas. Uh, the guidance thing, uh, you know, I, I think until we get the loan fund up, I think we, I think what we did last. Uh, worked and if we can keep the same just so we can get this you know i see this as a stepping stone to the to the next level uh and the deadline as soon as we can get it out i mean if we can get it out this month great okay excellent uh i'm going to come back to your answers to that question because they're the same as mine so michael and then larry um, yeah, I just feel like 100000 is kind of a lot for this because, I, I, you know, I thought our focus was to try and spend more money on fewer things, but I feel like we're still trying to hold on to doing the same thing that we have been doing for the past seven years. And, and I don't know, I'm thinking this is a lot, a lot, a big chunk of it. And even though we may not spend it this year, we could allocate it to something that big that comes up next year if it's housing or childcare. But I don't know. I think this is a lot. I don't think we need to provide guidance. I think the handholding can can go do away with and we can just make it clear in our applications that this is what we're we're looking for uh just michael were you at the last meeting we, i can't remember we, we had a long no discussion. i nobody okay. reminded me there was a meeting so i missed that one all right sorry the um the, we had a very long discussion about the 100k and just to, I, I left it off of this slide but what we what we talked about was 100 70 and 30 over the next three years. The idea is moving down to a permanent $30,000 level, which preserves a small program, but really lets us focus, but with a gradual transition. We had a long debate about that. And we voted, I think, six to two or something to, to do that to do that path. So I just, I, if possible, which is philosophically what you're, you know, in the direction yeah. you're describing, it's not quite the same. So it would be 100,000 this year and 30,000 the next year. That was no, kind of what we talked about was 100, then 70, and yeah. then 30. Okay, 170, okay, thanks. 100, thanks. comma 70, comma 30. Larry? Got it. You want to talk about that some more? I don't know. I mean, if Michael's okay with it, I would rather not yet. Yeah. Larry? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, 
but just with $100,000, are we setting aside $100,000 or are we saying that that's the maximum that we would give for this kind of grant and if, and if we have it? If, for instance, we some of these uh, major groups came in and wanted, uh, uh, you know, $200,000 um, for childcare, let's say, uh, in, and that would impinge on the $100,000. Are we willing, we're willing to do that? Well, well, I mean, I, I think at this point, it, it, we we have we have we're likely to have for for calendar twenty three, we're likely to have about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars available. So I think okay. at least for nine for twenty twenty three, I don't think we have to worry about that. Okay, uh, the moo point for, for twenty twenty three, it is. I hope for twenty twenty four, it isn't. Okay, Todd. Yeah, so yeah, it's funny. I remember the, the meeting now where we talked about this because that you had a. I needed the jog of memory. Um, so the only thing I would say is that all I know is last year. So Mike, I don't know about earlier, but last year I thought it was really successful, and the people in town were happy. And we know that we have to bring things in another direction, but I think that we still owe it. For people to do the hand holding if that's what they want and honestly i thought there would be a lot more last year but there wasn't so there probably won't be this year either but i think that just because we're going to move on to bigger better things in terms of what the town really could benefit from which i agree with what we're what we're working toward i just i just want to caution us to think about you know let's not just take our success for granted from last year's grant process um and you know just assume everyone's going to be submitting what they need and not not needing any handholding. I think that, you know, a lot of the best grants come from people that might not be the most qualified to write them is what I saw in a lot of ways. So, you know, I'm happy to still lend my time to that. Um, and I'm not saying that anyone's saying otherwise, but I just think that um, if we cap it at 100,000 this year, like we discussed with the tiered approach, which I think was Patrick's idea before, um, we still should support it fully with our time and efforts. and um, and also, I think we should make it clear to people um, what we're doing, that we are going to do a tiered approach if that's what we completely fully agree on. And the reason I say that is if there's someone out there, John, that might say, oh, maybe I'll just do it next year. Um, they might want to get the fire under the belly to do it this year, knowing that maybe next year is going to have a smaller total pool. So if we are discussing that transparency, I hate someone to say, oh, you, you didn't tell us that. And we just say, well, you should come to meetings, you know, because we know that doesn't work. <laughs> um, so yeah, long story short, the hundred K yes, uh, I agree. We shouldn't do the pre-app. It was a waste of time. It turns out because it wasn't followed the way I envisioned it. And it was Deborah and I's idea. So, um, I think we're both okay with that going away. Right, Deb. Um, yeah. So make it more streamlined. I think it doesn't need any editing. If it needs editing, we can certainly reach out to the programmer and we should release it soon for sure. Um, now that I remember the tiered thing and that whole thing in my fog of being sick, um, I, I'm, okay. I'm there. So, so I, so I think given what you've said, Todd, I think that there's a general consensus on all of these. Um, I, uh, on, so let me just say what I think the consensus is. And I'm, again, some people haven't made comments on each of them. Get rid of the pre-application. Don't set any maximum grant sizes allocate 100,000. We might not spend it, but if there's 100,000 of good grant applications, we will spend up to that point. Um, repeat the application and the review process. Um, uh, you know, remind people that we have five priority areas. And so, you know, if, you, if you, you can submit, even though there are working groups, you can submit something that's in those areas and you'll get a few <laughs> points for that. Um, I'm going to come back, you know, don't provide guidance to businesses. I don't want to, I, I, that's its own it's right. one specific question. And I want to question that. And the deadline is as soon as possible, as soon as we can get the dates changed within a week, we'll announce this program. The, by the way, the applications, the schedule would then be the applications are due. I would say the first week in January, we would have our meeting by the end of January um, and get it to the select board in early February for approval. So let, let's just say, leaving aside, does anyone object to what I've just said with the exception of the point about the guidance for businesses? Deborah Deb has a question. Deborah. Yeah, she's- One of the things that I'm getting really, really clear on is about uh, when things are not clear in communication and what that does within the community and how it can get distorted. And I just want to say, like, I just think, even in us writing this out, 
the 100K allocation for 2023 community grants, I think even having it written like that without it being clear, 100K for community grants, which means this, and you know, it, it, going for larger grants for this amount, which means that is really important because, you know, again, we're talking about a successful year. And I think people who are just kind of breezing over to are like, well, why are we, why is it going to a hundred K? Where's the rest of the money going? Why is the rest of the money going to the EDC? You know, all of those kind of things will come up if it's not clear that no, we're spending all this money on, you know, community development and we're allocating it in two different ways. I just think the that though that information needs to go together. Yeah. So let's let's break this up into what <coughs> we want to do and how we communicate it and the process we use to communicate it effectively. Let me just so I'm going to come back in one minute, Deborah, to your point, which I think is extremely important. Any disagreement about what it is we want to do. And you know what, in the interest of time, I think I'm going to not object for the moment to the guidance about businesses. I want to come back to that at some point where we have more time, maybe offline or something. Let's talk about Deborah's point about how we communicate this. I think it's a very good point. I think we, if we want to start this next week, we don't have time to vet that fully. I, don't, I, I think we should. I don't think we have to wait a month. And so I have two suggestions to address what Deborah said. One is that we get to work on an announcement and that we work on that um, you know, via email, basically. And, and perhaps if we need to, to call, we, I think we can figure out a way to make the email exchange public um, so that we can actually hold a meeting via email. And it's a public meeting that we can warn. I'd like to try that. Um, but that we work over the net and that we shoot to publish this you know, at the no later than the end of October, because the second thing I would like to do is to take this to the select board Ex with exactly the explanation you talked about, just at a high level, not every one of these points, but just the basic notion that we go back to this and we show the select board, which we said we were going to do. We said, look, we've worked for the last six months. This is the picture, particularly on the left-hand side. Those are the five things that we think for, the, for now, for these few years, for this year's, those are our priorities. And we've heard loud and clear from the community and we strongly agree that we need to focus on big, on big things. And those are the five, and we're looking for big, big grants in those five areas so we can move the needle. Mm -hmm. Therefore, here's how we would like to design the community grant process and just basically say 100K, it'll probably get smaller over the next few years. And the rest of the money would go towards big grants from community members or the EDC working group in these five priority areas and get in a public meeting, get the select board to buy off on that. That plus a communication to the public announcing this community grant program, just in the way you described, Deborah, that includes that, that um, you know, that explanation. I, yeah, and, and I think it's just the, the languaging that the things on the left were opened for those ideas and those large grants coming from community. Which is why I which is why I was trying yeah. to correct you. It turns out we were saying the same thing. Exactly. Right. It's yeah. the areas that we're focused on. And we have put teams to build big proposals on those five areas. If anyone else wants to put a team towards that, fantastic. And that's where the money is going. Yeah. I just yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so are people, I think to me, accepting a delay in the announcement of the community grant program is worth it in order to achieve, in order to avoid real communication problems for, you know, and so. I, I, I wanna say, John, I, I, I actually, I actually am not saying necessarily, I mean, if I'm saying a delay, I'm saying a delay like within a week for us to just get the language right. On yeah. You know, it, it might only be a week. Yeah, a week. Yeah. Less than three days. Like, let's hear, here are some ideas. Is everybody good? Kosher? Well, Great, well, let's go. Well, no, 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 hold on. I want to add into that, also reviewing it with a select board. I think there's a chance yeah. that we will get some really, you know, some serious pushback, some questioning, and why was this decision made at a meeting that no one attended and blah, blah, blah. And I think <laughs> if we said, look, we talked about it publicly, we then went to the select board and talked about it publicly, and the select board agreed, this is what it, this is how you know 
then I think we're in a much stronger position. So it might be a two week delay. The select board meets every two weeks and I can get us on the agenda for the next meeting, assuming we have. So we're talking about a few weeks delay. We're not talking about a significant delay. It might mean our meeting, it might mean that we give the grants out in the first week in February instead of the January 20th. I don't think it makes a huge difference. That's my opinion, unless someone disagrees. So okay. are you suggesting that we, that a couple of folks mm -hmm. volunteer to author uh, an appropriate announcement? Uh, absolutely. Who, Deborah, would you like to work on that, on the communication sure. of this? Sure. I'm happy. I'm happy to yeah, help work with this. me. Okay. Well, we we do that. No, no, you, you, yeah. I think what yeah. we would do though is uh, I'll I'll talk to you about the process because we don't we have to we comply double with work. The open yeah, meeting, we'll work it out. With the open meeting law. Okay. Yeah. yeah Deborah, you'd be a great job doing that. Yeah. And then let John edit it. Oh no. Yeah. Well, I think all of us so, will get a chance to look yeah. at it. So. Okay. All right. So I think we have agreed on what we want to do. We agree that we want to communicate it with the process we described. And I think we will then end up launching this pr program of community grants before our next meeting. Great. So, so let it be done. All right. Lastly, um, just when we're sort of going to run out of time here. Well, I mean, well, it's getting late because we're starting, we started the meeting at 6:30. We don't have to decide this tonight, the process for handling larger grants in the priority areas. Yeah. But here are questions, and maybe we make this homework. I think it's fine to make this homework. Here are four questions that I think we should answer at our next meeting. We have talked about a rolling proposal process, basically to put pressure on the working groups and on the community, anyone who wants mm. to, to, to sort of quickly develop a big proposal. Um, uh, so I think we need to just confirm that. It, it, it is a pretty important change. It, there's a different, there's pros and cons to having the community grant process, you know, at one time. It's why we shifted to it. We used to do much more of a rolling process. So just think about this. I'm not advocating one way or the other. I do think I should not have put the second question in. It seems like everyone agrees with Deborah's point, and particularly in light of the discussion we just had, we have to open it up to the community. Uh, do we? Do we? Should we define specific criteria for those large grants? Should we establish a minimum grant size? Um, Larry and Todd, again, I'm happy to postpone this discussion to the next meeting because I think we can focus on community grants for the next few weeks and take this up then. But if you feel free to comment, for Larry first, then Todd. I suspect Todd may have the same comment. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, I just think that um, we've already discussed the direction we're going. And I think that, you know, time is of the essence of many things. And we shouldn't put ourselves in a position where we over-regulate ourselves and have to change policy that we made. Uh, I say that we suggest that when grants are ready, they come in. And if we feel like it's not a good fit, then we make policies around that reality as opposed to, trying to over-regulate ourselves on the front end when it may not be necessary. Again, um, something happens tomorrow the community didn't anticipate. Uh, it's a great opportunity for grants and they come to us next week and have the best grant ever written in the history of the universe, but we have some policy we made that, you know, well, we're gonna talk about that in June. So I just think that in this new change, we should consider being a little open unless there's something that proves too onerous or perhaps um, makes people uncomfortable uh, I'm not saying to fly by the seat of the pants. I'm just saying that I'd, I'd, I'd try to stay away from uh, making rules until we have an understanding of what those rules should actually be framed around. For the five priority areas. If right, exactly. Okay, Larry? Uh, yeah, well, I, I just to add a little to that, um, Todd, I, I don't know if you're going to say anything about this, but I, uh, I feel like yeah. we've, we've got four fairly significant sized grants that could come up very soon in the child care area and we would you know we wouldn't want to encourage those grants if we don't have a rolling proposal process i think it would be really too bad to um, not <clears throat> not yeah. have that as our process patrick yeah, i would totally agree i think if we're going to do big grants they you know they may not come in on our schedule uh, so i think we need to make sure we we keep that out there so that, you know, somebody comes up with something great and it's in March or June, you know, we, we look at it because we're, again, it's as long as it's in those priorities. 
I've just edited the document. Does everyone agree with my edits? Yes. <laughs> Any objections? <laughs> okay. Thank you for your feedback. Brutal group. Okay. Um, <laughs> we end with good. I think that's great. Um, and I think we're going to learn a little bit more about what Larry and Todd were are talking about here in terms of the grant. So uh, we've talked about the rental centers. Let's come back to working group updates. Um, I know Stuart Matthews is on. And so let's start with um, downtown revitalization. And then we can go to, we've done housing already. We can go to childcare and then we'll see if there's anything else. So Stuart, Stuart is chairing uh, the downtown physical revitalization. There you are. Welcome, Thanks, Stuart. John. Um, so our, our committee is, is tasked with uh, developing a list of potential commercial projects that would take place in the downtown area that will improve the economic vitality of the community. Uh, we've got uh, our committee is myself, Joe Di Natale, Jack Rossi, Meredith Christensen, Ben Jervie, uh, Zoe Zillian, and Scott Smith. We have defined the uh, geographic area that we're focusing on basically as being from Woodstock, Hops and Barley to the rec center and from Vale Fields to the uh, Billings Farm intersection. So it's, mm -hmm. it's the vast majority of the downtown area. And what I wanted to do tonight was just walk through the approach we're using and um, let you know, give you a chance to respond to that. And I'll, we're, I wasn't planning on getting into specifics on projects that we're looking at, but I can if, if, if you guys would like me to. Um, the first thing we're doing is developing a list of, of potential projects to work on. We're looking at two categories of projects, of those that involve public assets. And what I mean by that is uh, are really focused on infrastructure and or property that is publicly owned as opposed to working on property that is privately owned. In either case, we are looking at projects or investments that we think have a um, significant opportunity to have a positive impact on the economic uh, vitality in Woodstock, of Woodstock and in Woodstock. So we created a, a hit list of about 15 different projects that fall into those two categories. Uh, we sort of are working now through them, we're force ranking them and identifying the major obstacles to each and the, the our sense of the impact of each. So what we're trying to do is focus on projects that we think have the maximum impact, potential impact, and at the same time, those that we think uh, will we, we have the highest likelihood of, of being successful with. Once we've done that, our intention is to come to the EDC uh, and present that list to you for your evaluation and consideration. And you know, you can decide if you want us to move forward with any particular projects or not, or or if you tell us to go in a different direction, we can do that. That's where we stand. That's what we're doing, and I'm happy to chat and give any any detail that's um, that's desired. Stuart, when you come, I have one quick question. Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, uh, I know one of my uh, struggles is something that should be handled by the town versus by the EDC. And are, are you weighing that into any of the your projects that you're thinking about? We are, and and right now, I don't think any of the projects that we're looking at are projects. Uh, there's maybe one, but um, but really, the projects we're looking at are not projects that would typically be undertaken by a municipality. So we're not suggesting, for example, let's resurface the roads. Um, right. We think that's a that's a municipal responsibility, but we may have projects that involve public space. So that's the distinction that that we're looking at. Okay, thank you. Uh, Larry, your hand is still up. I, I think it's just remaining up from before, right? Yeah, okay. Any other, um, Stuart, you're gonna, so when you come back to us, are you gonna come back? To, I, I don't, I'm not suggesting one way or the other, but are you gonna come back to us with the list and get sort of broad feedback from us? Or are you gonna develop each proposal and say, if we were to do number one, it would, it would be $125,000 and here's what we would get from it. And we think that's the best investment. The second best is, is will you come back to us with actual funding requests in effect, you'll have developed it that far, or is there some step before that that we will get to see that? I don't care the answer. I just want to know. You know, I, I think it. I guess I would say you guys should give me some some guidance. What what my plan is at this point, our plan, excuse me, is to take the long list. So we take we start with the fifteen, we work down to seven. I'd like to prioritize that down to three, um, and 
you know, each are going to have pros and cons and, and we can we can try to do some rough budgets. But I think at that point, we would we would want some guidance as to what direction yeah. uh, the EDC felt was most appropriate. And then we could develop that further. Yeah, I think that would be great. Just just what you described. Once you've got the priorities, even though you, maybe order of magnitude dollars, but not a deep, not something that we would grant money to, but something that we would say, yeah, that really looks like it's worth a lot of money. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Is everyone and, okay and, and with that? Also, you know, at that point, if <clears throat> none of them, if you don't think any of them hit your target, I can show you the, you know, the other ones and, uh, you know, the stuff that didn't make our list. And you might tell us that you think those, you know, are more be a higher priority and we can, we can focus on those. Right. Okay. All right. Are there um, any, everyone comfortable with that? And I, process? and I don't know if Joe wants to add anything. Joe, Joe is a committee member and I know he's, he's, he's on the EDC and I think he's on the call still. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. I think the only thing I would I would add to is probably a clarification about um, the categories: one public, and the other one private. Instead of private, I would use the word commercial. Uh, and Stuart and I talked. Yeah, about yeah, that's a, a good point. And and Joe's point is we're we're not um, when, when we think about the downtown. There's commercial buildings and there's residential buildings. We are not thinking of focusing on residential buildings. We are really looking at commercial. Um, area <clears throat> as opposed to residential things yeah okay great other um other questions or comments there's something in the chat sorry i wasn't paying it uh okay all right any other comments all right Stuart, joe that's great Thank you for that. Oh, sorry, is there a time frame? Like, or not not a deadline, but what would you expect? When when would you expect to come back to us? When will you guys meet monthly? Yeah, I mean, I think we can probably. Joe, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think we can probably have a list to present to you next month. Yes, definitely. That'd be great. That's definitely. fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, child care. This is a big one. Yeah. Um, I'm trying okay. to make this brief and. If nothing makes sense, just interrupt me. So I'm, I'm unwell. Um, there's good things happening in town. Um, just to give the recap, <clears throat> there's 27 families that have a child birth up to three years old that do not have care, six of which are moving because of this issue that responded to our survey. There is an after school crisis, which we didn't know until we went out to the town and started this conversation with folks um, where people have to leave work early to try to pick up the children because the aftercare doesn't exist like it did last year at Wes and other places. Um, there is a summer crisis where when the kids are out of school, um, parents have again, a work issue where they have no one to watch their child because summer program isn't available. Uh, we've had at least uh, a dozen discussions of, uh, with folks about one person leaving the workforce in our survey. Um, so that's a little bit of color on the, the calamity that we're facing. Um, so what happened, to recap what happened, we reached out, we heard a lot of the same things. We heard uh, you know, that it's uh, housing, it's wages, it's, it's personnel in general, it's all, all these things. And those are, all, those are all part of the same pancake batter, you know, which is what we found is we need to go, we're not experts. Joe talked about that a lot. He wanted to make it clear that everyone knows that we know nothing about this. Larry and I, Joe, Mika, we're just here for information gathering. What do we find? We met with all the area providers, every single one of them, Rainbow, WCCC, Woodstock Nursery. We met with the superintendent of the union, uh, Sherry Souza. We met with Maggie Mills, principal of West. We met with the community campus and Bridgewater Daycare. And we've been consulting on occasion with Let's Grow Kids and Brenda, who's been a tremendous asset and information for us. And just to recap on that, LGK, as they're known, is a policy-driven um, organization that's working on longer-term solutions. We are working on the solution for today and tomorrow. Um, we anticipate uh, several, um, using Larry's words, because they're perfect, we anticipate several exciting proposals in the near future. Those proposals will include uh, after-school uh, fixing, and summer program fixing. What I mean by that is we've identified a problem. We're providing potential solutions for those problems through these grant proposals in a meaningful way. We have the biggest need again in the six week, uh, I call it birth, but there's some debate there. You know, I, I think, you know, maybe three days after 
they don't want the kid going in. But six week to three year old, again, those 27 families in need with Rainbow uh, is going to be able to hopefully through their proposal immediately start to satisfy some of that need um, with a meaningful and sustaining uh, proposition. Uh, it's basically looking at us uh, bridging a gap for them to provide wages, health, benefit, welfare uh, for their employees and their new employees. Um, and that brings me uh, to the after school. Um, the district has been unable to fill the positions and due to their union uh, work issues, they're not able to take monies from outside parties and just dole it out to the two positions that handle West for the after school kids. So WCCC is working incredibly hard, Ruth over there to work with the leadership in that space and all the uh, things necessary to increase capacity, including having met with fire, life, safety, town, uh, regional governance, um, people who say that it's okay to bring more children in these spaces. Um, <clears throat> we have um, looked at the major need and realized that it still wouldn't be enough at Rainbow and we didn't know what to do. And out of that, uh, Larry and John also has done some great work reaching out with uh, the Bridgewater daycare. Um, it's it's something we wanted to talk about with the commission as a whole to see if we can get to be a, 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 at a comfortable level. Um, why do we want to have this conversation? Well, there are people in Woodstock whose needs aren't currently being net, met, even if we go and get successful awarded grants to places like Rainbow and TCC um, for these groups. And it turns out that Woodstock Daycare is just over the border and they have 14 slots now and 13 of them are currently filled by folks who are residents of Woodstock. Um, they have a new fantastic facility um, and they're very willing and open to work with us on providing what they hope could be a successful grant proposal to meaningfully impact the Woodstock families that still have a need. I decided to say, well, why would we send our money in Bridgewater? You know, it, oh, it's across the street, it's this. And I think John made a great point early on, well, we're not gonna pay Bridgewater's roads if Woodstock people are driving on it more than Bridgewater folks. But I think that I equated this to a, this is a infrastructure that's broken, the school infrastructure, the infrastructure of employment uh, coming out of COVID specifically and with things that uh, we've heard about in this commission of retirees leaving the workforce and not enough people being born and coming in at this time of their lives to take these jobs. So I say that we think about it as the, electric company that Woodstock uses is located in Bridgewater. It services a few places, Bridgewater, Hartford, wherever, and it's broken. It needs repair. I think that it would be an easy thing for the folks to understand in Woodstock that we might need to provide some capital improvements for the infrastructure of that power plant to satisfy our community, even though it might not be located there. So when I see the 13 out of 14 families being served currently by Woodstock, uh, in Wood, with Woodstock residents at Bridgewater Daycare, it might as well be called the Woodstock Daycare. Um, so they have uh, made some real inroads with Larry and John, like I said, and the summary of that is that they have immediate room for capacity. Um, they need some funding opportunities. Um, there's been discussion on how would that look if we gave X amount of dollars from Woodstock, what's to stop a Redding family from putting their children in there, this and that. Well, well, nothing, but they had a great idea to contemplate. And again, what we're looking for is to have the commission give a nod if it's okay to pursue these further conversations. Um, what they're saying is uh, perhaps it's as simple as if we gave a portion of X that they need to raise to solve these issues with their staffing, that that portion could directly correlate to a minimum number of the amount of Woodstock people that would be coming through. So for example, $100,000, if we gave them 60, 60% 60 of the new people would be able to come from Woodstock. Um, that's a great first idea. It could be the best idea. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's the basic update. We have a big problem. We're, we're helping to solve the problem. And what we found is that once we finally got in touch with these providers, and it was a lot of work. And, you know, I, I was frankly irritated with all of them. I, that's just the truth that you can't, they don't call you back. You know, they, they're just, their email's wrong. They're this, that. It turns out they're just busy taking care of our children. And they don't have time all day and they're tired and they have their own families and they're working incredibly hard for small amounts of money and no benefits. So these are first responders. These are people that I hope we can look at, whether they're just across the way in Bridgewater or not. And I'm looking for support from the commission 
Um, it's not something I don't think that needs to be voted on, but I leave it to the chair. But I'm looking for support to continue these discussions and be able to work with them so that they can provide a proposal, a meaningful proposal to help the families in Woodstock in need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Sorry. I think all of that is amazing. I think it's all great. I mean, and so, so incredibly beneficial to the town. I mean, as a business owner here in town, we have lost a couple of very good employees because of daycare issues. So uh, I, I applaud you and your group. I think you're doing a great job. And if you require a vote now to support this effort as much as we possibly can, I make that motion. All right. Um, the, uh, well, let's just Thanks, accept the motion uh, yeah. because it's a general vague motion. Yeah. Is there a second to the motion and we'll discuss it? I'll second it. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, is the chair allowed to second the motion? Does anyone know? Sure. Okay. I second it. I second Patrick it. Second it. Okay, fine. Uh, discussion. Uh, just a couple points. I think, John, before you do that, can I just make one point too? Sure. Go ahead, uh, Patrick. And then make along with Todd's uh, thing about spending money on Bridgewater, uh, it ties right into the grants manager uh, and being able to let the grants manager work with Todd's group to help find funding for. Uh, the Bridgewater thing. So it, it, they do tie together. And, and you know, I think we should, uh, because as as we've all pointed out, the facility is heavily, uh, you know, Woodstock people. So, you know, I'd like to tie that together with this. Yeah. With, with this. So, so I think what we what we don't, I don't think we need a motion, although I didn't, you know, I don't, yeah, sure. I think, I don't it, think we do. We have yeah, but just to be clear, when we talk about giving money to Bridgewater, I think this is really important. The organization that we're dealing with is a private organization. It gets no funding from Bridgewater. The a nonprofit. Town. It's a not for profit. It gets no funding. It just happens to be located about, I don't know, 700 yards in the wrong direction, so to speak, in the, in the, in the bad PR direction. This is a, is a, this can't be called anything other than a Woodstock child care program. And they are prepared, they are prepared, well, the executive director is prepared, I think, to recommend to her board that if we provide 100% of the funding they need for this expansion capacity to guarantee that Woodstock will have first shot at 100% of the capacity. And I think it's important to notice that for both, I believe it's true, Todd, I haven't seen some of the other proposals, but that for Larry, you can confirm this. I think that for both the zero to three age group expansion that they're thinking of and the after school program expansion they're thinking of are the largest by quite a bit of any expansion proposal that we have. Right. So we would be, to put it simply, we would be nuts not to give, not to, if we like the grant and we think that there's a need, which I think we've established that. Um, we would be nuts not to do this. It's a very, so, so I, does anyone have an objection to, if we were, if we like the grant, if the grant proposal is appropriate as compared to the others, we, we may fund all of them. That, that does anyone have a philosophical objection to giving money to an organization that is serving the Woodstock community but is based a bit over the property? Line? I would, I would, I like to interject one thing: is um, the proposal as was suggested that if we were to. Uh, support them 100% that uh, Woodstock residents would get first shot at any vacancies or openings that that include uh, people who possibly live in Bridgewater, but are employed or could be employed in Woodstock in, in, in addition to Woodstock residents. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I, okay. Fine. So we have to. So why don't we let the let let the working group the two that we lost went to Bridgewater. Right. Right. Let's let the work. Right. So okay, that's very interesting. Let's let the working group factor that into all of the yeah. grant applications yeah. and come to us with proposals yeah. that they think meet the meet the objectives. Let's not set a rule for or against what yeah. you said. I happen to agree with it. Yeah. So, so Todd, you and Larry and the group will have to consider what what it means to be supporting Woodstock. Is there anyone who objects to, the, to them and the grant manager supporting the grants for any of those, any or all, well, for that program in particular, all the others fit into Woodstock. Anyone opposed to that? No, okay, Aaron great. Dunn. So I think we, yeah. Can I just ask one quick question, Todd? Larry's the group? got his hand up. Oh, Larry, is your hand up or is it still up? From, go ahead, Larry. Uh, yeah, it is up. I, I was just gonna interject that just so that uh, heads up. Um, uh, we're expecting, three if, and probably four 
grant application very soon. Yeah. Just to let you know that. And, and actually that was, I wanted, my question was to elicit from you two things about those applications. You've, you've answered the timing thing. I have two other points. Could you give us a sense adding up all of the, because I, I, want, I want everyone to understand the magnitude of what you have accomplished in a short period of time, not that we've approved these grants yet, but A, can you tell us the total number of places in whatever, whether it's after school or, or any, doesn't, don't worry about the segments, total number of places that these programs in the next 12 months would likely accomplish and B, the total funding, which in every case I believe is one time funding, the total funding that would be needed, roughly speaking, to achieve those number of spaces, just order of magnitude. I mean, I can just tell you right now that we'd be servicing it in the folks we've talked to that we anticipate to receive grants from uh, well north of 50, 60 children right away. I mean, it could even be as high as 70. Um, we have to break that down and just holistically, we're talking about the plus 22 potential in Bridgewater, we're talking about about 20 at Rainbow, we're talking at about 20 at TCC, and we're talking about potentially as many as 20 to 30 at WCCC, and then the after school program that doesn't exist now, um, that would go with TCC and WCCC, that goes for kids that are even older to 12 years old, I think. So we're literally talking about many, many dozens of children and many, many dozens of families that will have relief. Awesome. And the total funding that would be required, the ones that I'm familiar with are all one-time funding that lead to a sustainable business model. What, what's the total of the one-time funding? I think it's maybe, I would guess it would be an order of magnitude of 200 or 225. Yeah, I would, I would estimate about 250. That's right. And what we looked for, <clears throat> um, because we have a chair that's really fiscally minded, uh, we look for people to go and tell us and find out. Um, and we encourage this in their proposals of how this isn't just something that they're going to come up with next year and really lay out their case of, of how this can transform their business of childcare and their labor force that serves it. So it really is, um, you know, we're waiting to see them, right? But these conversations have been uh, very, very deliberate. And um, it's just exciting stuff, John. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I have a question. Jill. So you've talked about giving grants for 250,000 and then 100,000 for the community. That's 350,000. How much are you anticipating for next year? We're anticipating, well, I mean, this uh, for 2022, the current year we're forecasting revenue of about 355,000. So if, if the housing group comes up with 100,000, how are you going to fund all these projects? We have a cert, we have a reserve fund of un, previously unallocated funds of about four hundred and fifty thousand. I see. Okay. Yeah. And okay. the three hundred fifty thousand is up nineteen percent from the year before. Um, we, we only of the three fifty from this year, we only granted three hundred, thinking that we were only going to have three hundred. So our reserves are actually going up. Okay. Um, Thank you. And we're, you know, so yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up, Jill, because we want children to have places to live too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do just one comment Todd, that I know the I mean the working group I don't want you to get caught in, by surprise by this but the after school program at Bridgewater Larry remind me was a, a 30 plus people Thir and, oh, wow. 32 and so, 33 yeah and they have a huge facility there it's like a basketball court so um, but uh, it's fantastic and I'm not suggesting that if we have 27 families that we should create 27 spaces, not 28. But I think if you add up all of those numbers, you're talking about 100 or 125 spaces. And, That's crazy. and I think we want to have extra capacity, but I do think you, you need to basically talk about demand in proportion to the supply when all these grants come in so that we make sure that we overdo it but that we don't overdo it. I mean, the, John, to, to so that on. point, I mean, th this, it, I might get emotional because I've had so many families reach out to me about this and, you know, it's just so, it's just so hard for them. But I mean, there are people who aren't moving here because of this problem. People will move here. The economy is directly related to these folks performing their jobs and duties and spending their money in and around the area of Woodstock and they can't do it. They call, they find out their friend lives here. We love it. It's beautiful. Come up for 
uh, leaf peeping and all this. And they say, well, we'd love to move here, but it's impossible because there's no child care. We, we have to go and uh, do the best we can to fix the highest proportion of the problem, even the proportion that might not immediately exist. It's fine. That, that what you just did addresses the problem in the context of supply and demand. It just reframes what demand is, which all I'm saying is you need to address the relationship between demand and supply. And if Absolutely. the answer is what you've just said, Fantastic. We just need to be able to tell the public, this is why we're doing what we're doing. I understand. It'd be good. You know what? Maybe we can go and um, get, I can maybe get a testimonial or two from, from some folks. I think that carries a lot of weight. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So we've seen three working groups. Um, uh, marketing, Patrick, do you want to uh, talk at all about marketing? Yeah, just briefly. Uh, well, let me just talk to the grants manager first. Uh, I'm happy that we all agree that that the grants manager, uh, that she can work with uh, with Todd's group for the Bridgewater thing, because that was something that I thought was made sense. Uh, uh, Allison Caffrey, we had a meeting with uh, Allison Clarkson and uh, Charlie wow. Kimball. Uh, which was a fantastic meeting. There's a lot of money uh, in the state right now. So Allison's going to work very closely with, with the two of them uh, to figure out what money is there and, and who it can be for. Uh, in the listserv, we're posting uh, different grants that we're finding. We've got forms on the website. Uh, so Allison has, has found a lot of stuff and we're right now it's, it's getting the word out. So if you guys uh, know of anybody or or you know spread the word to 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 go to the to the website and you know put their information in Allison will get back to them quickly. Uh, we're looking to find some some quick wins and it sounds to me like the housing or the uh, child care could be a, a, a win. So uh, you know please be aware that that's there and spread the word that that they can people can look. Uh, the other thing is uh, marketing. We're moving forward with the the new fall. Uh, campaign as part of the program, uh, collecting more, you know, more information and in, in building the the database and remarketing to people, uh, and we're we're in a good spot right now. Uh, I'm going to put together a whole new uh, report uh, that I'm going to it'll come in next month uh, that'll show everything that's going on. Uh, but you know, just to give you an idea, some of the numbers that we're seeing, uh, we're increasing traffic to the website by anywhere from 25 to, to 35% uh, from over last year. And last year was a crazy year in terms of the number of people coming. So uh, what we're doing is working really well and we're just <clears throat> perfecting it and uh, getting it you know, situated so that we have it as a full year program uh, that when it comes time to change things, we're just changing uh, its content slightly. So everything is working really well right now. And we're in the process of putting together a bigger proposal for a, a two, three year uh, plan that'll take this program and build it even stronger. Uh, and, you know, so keep your, keep your, uh, keep, keep your eyes open uh, in the next few months for that. <coughs> okay. Um, Deborah and uh, Deborah, sorry, your hand is raised. Go ahead. Um, this was just, this was just an update I wanted to give on Ted at once we were done with marketing. Oh. Okay, perfect. I just want to say, any questions about any of the updates so far? I, I didn't really give people a chance. Okay, um, I actually, can if I can just introduce Deborah, what you're not what you're about to say, but the fifth working group is events. We have funded, um, you know, one very important event. But Michael and Deborah, um, I think I'd like to get the events working group beyond just the grants we made last year. And I mean, I've talked to you know, both of you about this, but we haven't, we, I don't know if you have anything to report more broadly, but obviously the event that we funded has taken place. I thought it was fantastic. So Deborah, do you want to give a quick update? Uh, yeah, I just wanted, first of all, to thank everybody who has um, either sent me notes in support or actually showed up or um, uh, also for my title sponsors, uh, which were EDC and uh, Mad Nut and Billings, uh, Mad Old Nut, um, which was incredibly helpful. Um, you know, it was, I think it, I'm getting good feedback and it was, you know, sold out as far as the room was concerned, but we had an overflow room that we could have handled so much more capacity. Um, and what I'm hearing is that people were like, oh, I didn't quite understand what it was, or I didn't know, or, 
it was it was a very interesting kind of response that we've gotten since. Um, I've also um, <clears throat> I was really pleased with the conversations that have come up since, and uh, want people to know that we're immediately working towards um, having quarterly salons, which will be an evening program, which will have three speakers and a moderator and open dialogue about some of the issues that we talk about through the EDC and otherwise. Um, and I really, now that people have seen what's possible, I really, really would like to get more community involvement. Um, I had one person, you know, say there wasn't enough Vermonters, and I, I think, but it was somebody who he didn't actually come to the event. And, you know, we had seven people from Vermont and three other people from New England and only four people from a broader area. And I think that that's about the right uh, ratio. Uh, for this event, I think it's important to bring in voices from beyond to add to the mix, um, as well as to showcase people from Vermont. Um, and I really want to get more community involvement. So uh, on October 27th, and I hope you guys can save the date, um, we're looking to do an event. Um, you know, this is still in the works. We'll know in the next two days with Vermont Distillery. Uh, where, you know, it's Thursday night before Thanksgiving, so it'll be a big party for adults prior to spending the weekend with their kids. Um, and, you know, and I have some music, musical guests uh, that we're trying to um, solidify. But the idea is that it would start with a conversation. You said October. What? Did you said October 27th. Is that what you meant? Yeah, yeah I did say October. Did I say something different? Was that the no, night you said right before Thanksgiving? Uh, no, yeah. Oh, Thanksgiving sorry, right early. before Halloween. Right before Halloween. Okay. Sorry. Right, okay. Yeah, right before the Halloween weekend. Um, but the idea is that we start off with uh, like, hey, tell me who I should meet. Tell me the stories that you want to hear. Tell me, you know, and and really get people's opinions and get people involved and even develop a committee around um, next year's ideas. Um, and I'm open to hearing what anybody else wants to suggest about it too. But I think it was a, it was a good beginning. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I agree. I thought it was very interesting. I was surprised at some of the things that I that that I was you know the, some of the topics that I when I looked at the agenda that I thought oh I would skip that one but I was there and it just went one after the other and it turned out to be all of those ones that I would have skipped turned out to be very interesting. <laughs> Which I, I think is an, is something about Ted that that um, you know it, it, it's uh, it, it, it's not it's not logical, but it it, it happens. So it's pretty interesting. All right, <clears throat> any other comments to Deborah or anything else? All right, no. Okay, all right. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Thanks. Oh, sorry, I just want to make one last thing. I again, I made this comment last month. But it's even more true this month, and I think it will continue. If it stays at this level, I think it'll be fantastic. The productivity that we get and the focus that we get on the things that we wanted to be focused on is so evident now coming out of the working groups and the initiatives, whether it's an initiative of a grant writer or the working groups and so forth. And I just think it's really, really powerful. We just have to stay this course and, um, you know, have to, you know, I just want to particularly call out housing and childcare this month for you know this for really really you know having starting to have or getting ready to have a real impact in uh, in what's happening Todd, so a lot of good hand? work a lot I, of great um, work those groups yeah I, got I on the school board we i've done this before and larry's gonna get mad sorry on the school board we have time to reflect at the end amongst the group and i just again want to reflect on how much i appreciate uh larry and john for working with me on this child care thing everyone's so busy and John's in a million directions. And Larry literally emails me 500 ton things at a day and saying, get this done, do this, do that. I'm like, you only can call me, Larry, stop emailing me. And he calls me <laughs> all the time. And I'm just so grateful for you, Larry. And I just want to say, everyone, even though you asked me not to say it out loud, I'm saying it out loud, Larry, I really appreciate you, man. And, and you're just, you're the best. Thank you, Larry. That's great, that's very nice. All right, um, anything else? Anybody? No, All right. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion yes. to adjourn. Joe's got it. Is there a second? Second. Uh, no, Michael had his hands up. A nonverbal second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?
All right, it's 8.12, we are adjourned.